The Read to Lead Podcast, Episode 3. Forty-five million people are going to iTunes every single month searching for content to fill their rise, to fill their workouts. Why not reach that demographic? Welcome to the Read to Lead podcast with Jeff Brown. Jeff believes that if you desire to achieve true success in business and in life, then consistent and intentional reading is a must. The Read to Lead podcast will not only help you narrow this ever important reading list, but also bring you key insights and valuable feedback from some of today's most successful and inspiring authors. And now, here's Jeff. Hi, and welcome to episode three of the Read to Lead podcast. I am your host, Jeff Brown. Our guest today, John Lee Dumas, who is host of the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And we'll talk with him in just a moment about why you might want to think about, regardless of your business or industry, launching a podcast and what benefits that could provide for you and your company. But first, this episode is brought to you by Get Abstract. Get Abstract summarizes business books, making their subscribers, people like you, the best read, most expert players on the business scene today. Now, their mission is to provide executives worldwide with the best in business knowledge. They deliver concise five-page summaries of the latest, sharpest, and most relevant books in seven different languages. Their clients include Microsoft, Citicorp, Daimler, Chrysler. In fact, 20% of the Fortune 500, they have no affiliation with any one publishing house, which means they work independently for you. Get Abstract is designed to fit your busy lifestyle. That way, you can get the knowledge you need when you need it. Get more knowledge in less time and start making smarter decisions right now. You can subscribe now to get abstract book summaries at readtoleadpodcast.com slash summary. That's readtoleadpodcast.com slash summary. I am very excited for you to hear from John Lee Dumas today. John is the founder and host of Entrepreneur on Fire. It's a podcast that interviews today's uh, most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. And the cool part is John does this every day of the week. Uh, it is a top-ranked business podcast with over 250,000 unique downloads a month in over 145 countries. And his lineup, in case you don't know, has included Barbara Corcoran from uh, Shark Tank, author Seth Godin, one of my favorites, yeah. uh, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, Guy Kawasaki, and hundreds more. I think you're in the 250 range now with your show. Uh, all that happens at eofire.com because... Even after uh, a year of doing this, or nearly a year of doing this, John cannot spell entrepreneur. So eofire.com. <laughs> Welcome to the show, John. Thanks, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. It's important to note uh, for our listeners that we're actually recording this on the 4th of July, and I would be remiss if I didn't, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your service to our country. Jeff, thank you for that. I do appreciate the appreciation. I'm now uh, a reserve captain in the U.S. Army, so let me continue to pass that thanks forward to those active duty soldiers that are continuing to serve. John, for those that may not know, um, catch us up on where you've come from, starting with, say, maybe spring of last year or further back, if you want to go further back, to today and, and, and how you got there. Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll go a little further back for about 30 seconds just to give a little perspective. But when I graduated, I was commissioned as an officer back in 2002. So I spent four years active duty, which did include 13 months in Iraq. Um, then I entered the reserves at 26 and in 2006, and I tried a bunch of different things. I tried commercial real estate. I was a corporate uh, in corporate finance for John Hancock. I was with a tech startup for a little while. So I really did a, a bunch of things in a lot of different areas. And it was a lot of Fun, but just about springtime last year, I was in my car driving to work like so many listeners are doing right now. And I had an aha moment because I loved listening to podcasts while I was driving. And my favorite podcasters came out with great shows, but just once a week, Jeff. And it was not enough for me because mm -hmm. I, again, was driving to work five days a week. I was hitting the gym four to five times a week. And I loved listening to podcasts on the treadmill, on the elliptical machine, what have you. So I had that little lightning bulb that went off and said, you know what? There needs to be a seven-day-a-week podcast that interviews today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. That is the day that Entrepreneur on Fire was born, and I haven't looked back since. Well, for that person listening uh, right now who's a, maybe a business owner, a marketer, an entrepreneur, uh, why would they might want to consider adding a podcast to their arsenal? There are so many reasons to add podcasting to your arsenal. For instance, 
five years ago, nobody looked at YouTube as a major search engine. And now here we sit, it's the number two search engine in the world, second only to Google, which happenstance owns YouTube. I was just at Social Media Marketing World here in San Diego in April, where Michael Stelzner, the CEO and founder of Social Media Examiner, stands up in front of 1,100 people as the keynote speaker and says, podcasting, bar nothing in our study, is the hottest thing in 2013. 45 million people are going to iTunes every single month searching for content, free content to fill their rise, to fill their workouts. Why not be there as well? Why not reach that demographic? Look at Entrepreneur on Fire. I reach over a quarter million people every single month in over 145 countries, all because I'm in iTunes. And the barrier is low, but it's high enough where many people are not taking that leap. It's so easy to create a blog. So millions of people are doing that every single month. Right. It's a little more difficult to create a podcast. So hundreds of people are doing that every month. <laughs> and that's a huge differentiator, Jeff. And when you have a podcast, to specifically answer your question, you develop authority in your niche, you establish an intimate connection with your listeners, and you just are reaching a different demographic of people that like to consume audio. And that's huge because that's your those are your clients as well. And would you say now with this podcast as sort of the foundation of your launching pad, uh, is it safe to say that that has uh, opened up new doors for you and allowed you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do or wouldn't have been able to do without the podcast? 100%. Entrepreneur on Fire is a great case study because that's all I started with was a podcast. I wasn't like a Chris Brogan who had an amazing platform before he went and started his podcast, The Human Business Way, in January. I had nothing else. I just started blank slate, no online presence with my podcast back in June of 2012. I actually launched in September of 2012 is when the first podcast went live. And so you can see how quickly things have gone since then in a very positive way. And so everything that I've developed in my business, Entrepreneur on Fire LLC, is a direct result of my podcast. And you, if I'm not mistaken, you, you had like 40 interviews or something like that in the can before you went live. Is that right? That's exactly right, Jeff. I call it my summer of fire. I literally <laughs> decided to launch Entrepreneur on Fire. I had no idea how to do a podcast. I knew how to listen to a podcast, <laughs> but I had no further ideas than that. So I reached out. I got a coach, Jamie Tardy, the eventual millionaire. Wasn't cheap, but you know, she was incredibly valuable because she had the experience. She took me down to Blog World in New York City, June 2012. I got introduced to Pat Flynn, Derek Halpern, Adam Baker, and others. And I was able to take those people that I met shook their hands, asked them to be on the show. They said yes, and use that as social proof to over that summer of fire to get 40 interviews lined up and completed. So when I launched September of 2012, I could keep that daily show going. Mm -hmm. And when preparing for the launch of your podcast, is there anything, you know, looking back on it now that you would have done differently if given the chance? In other words, Jim, share with us. We want to know you're human. Share with us a way you messed up, I guess is what I'm, I'm saying. I'm very human. I messed up a thousand <laughs> times and I can to mess up a hundred times every single day on certain levels. And the biggest thing that I messed up on um, with, with Entrepreneur on Fire was I didn't launch sooner. I kept pushing that launch date back and back and back because I thought I need to get better. I need to have more interviews. Well, guess what? You're never going to be good enough in your mind. You're <laughs> never going to be better. You're never going to have enough interviews in the can to make you feel comfortable. Nothing is ever going to be satisfied. So I kept pushing it back from August 15th to September 1st to September 15th. Finally, and luckily, this is why it's great to have a coach or a mastermind. I had my coach say, John, launch the gosh darn podcast. <laughs> and I did. And if I had done it a month earlier, great things would have happened. Because again, I just want to reiterate that point. You're never going to be good enough in your mind. You're never going to be where you want to be. So you need to start to get better. And so I wish I had started earlier. If you could narrow it down, what's maybe the one accomplishment from the last year related to your podcast that you're most proud of? Well, I can definitely narrow that down because, again, as I shared earlier, 
I went down with Jamie Tardy to Blog World 2012, June, New York City, met all those amazing people, saw her and everybody else that was there speaking at the conference, get up on stage and just share what they were passionate about, what they were excited about doing and they were making a great living doing so and this whole new world was, was opened up to me. I'm like, wow, I am so in awe of these people that they've broken away from their chains and they've burst onto the scene by doing something that they love and they're making a living off of it. I always was searching for that passion that I could grab onto and I never had found it until Entrepreneur on Fire. And so my proudest moment, Jeff, was six months later from that point and only three months after I launched my podcast, because of the success, I was asked to speak at the following New Media Expo by Blog World in January 2013 in Las Vegas and to be up on stage after just six months having my world open to it and then six <laughs> months later being on stage speaking to people was amazing. I bet that was a lot of fun. So much fun. <laughs> uh, you you, you uh, hinted at mastermind groups a moment ago. I, I recently started one with some trusted friends. Uh, share, if you would, with uh, what I affectionately call, and I borrowed this from you, the Read to Lead Nation, uh, how you define yeah. a mastermind group and why you think participating in one is so important. <laughs> well, for the listeners, um, I always refer to my listeners as Fire Nation. So that's what <laughs> Jeff's referring to when he says the word nation, which is not trademark. So I'm really happy to use it. I, I borrowed it from somebody else, I'm sure, but I love it. And I definitely am glad you're using it as well, Jeff. But I could not be more of a proponent for masterminds. And I can tell you specifically why. When I first launched, again, I, I got that one on one coach, which was incredibly powerful. I also immediately joined a mastermind of my my own called the podcast mastermind and Cliff Ravenscraft was running that and that was incredibly valuable and I really enjoyed that and it was that support that I needed it was that motivation it was being held accountable by these people that was so valuable and for me you know, now that I have Entrepreneur on Fire and I have such a huge listener base and I get emails every single day from listeners around the world that are sharing with me what's holding them back and what they're scared of. It was so consistent that they didn't have that support community that they that was there that was supporting them, was committed to their success. So because of that, I, like you, Jeff, just launched my own membership masterminds, Fire Nation Elites, and it's just been unbelievable. I thought I was going to start with like 20 people, but I had over 160 applications, mm. and so I've decided to narrow it down, and I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with every single applicant thus far, and we, we launched just three days ago, so July 1st. I know it's August when this is going live, but we launched July 1st with the founding 50 of Fire Nation Elite. Oh, cool. It's just 50 amazing entrepreneurs all committed to each other's success, and we're not leaving anybody behind. We're bringing people on as we go forward, and we want to grow slowly and organically, and we're adding new features as we go, but that's just to reiterate your point. I believe masterminds are critical to everybody's success. Everybody who's an entrepreneur should have a mastermind, whether it is a membership mastermind, whether it's an open and free mastermind, whether it's a meetup.com mastermind, whatever it may be, you should have a group of like-minded people that you talk to consistently. Now, uh, someone listening right now might be going, well, isn't this podcast about talking to Authors, we're talking to a podcaster. So let's <laughs> let's dig into your book, sure. podcast launch. Uh, first, what prompted you to write a book on how to launch a podcast? I think I know the answer to this, but I, I think it uh, it needs to be asked. Well, for the exact same reason, I launched Fire Nation Elite. Honestly, Jeff, and and I know that you do this as well. And and I always recommend every person that runs a business to do this and that's listen to your clients, listen to your target market and I kept getting those same emails over and over again, John, I love your podcast, I think it would be great for my business, how do I do that? And I, I can't answer that email obviously, <laughs> um, one by one by one because that would just, literally I would be doing nothing else. So why not just create an incredible, very low cost resource for all of these people that want to learn how to create a podcast. I can just sit down, which I did over one weekend. I created a 40 page ebook about how to launch a podcast. I poured all of my heart and soul into it, my story, all of my knowledge. And Jeff, I included 15 video tutorials with this book as well because I wanted people that 
you know, didn't want to just read how to supposedly tag an MP3, but actually watch me do that so they could just very easily understand the process visually as well as reading. So I combined the two, making it more like a product and a book as well. And I put it onto Amazon and almost immediately it became and still is to this day, the number one ranked book in Amazon on podcasting with over 105 five-star reviews. I know your listeners really realize the power of those five-star reviews and, and how that 105 is a ton. And I can just tell you why I have that many. Because the book is a $5 book, but it provides so much value, mostly because of those 15 video tutorials that could be a $200 product, but are just included with the book. I know uh, as I read it, I was able to read it in, in I think, an afternoon, and sure. I really appreciated the the added uh, benefit of the videos and going through the the, uh, the tutorials step by step was huge to be able to just take it from the page and actually see someone doing what you're learning about. So that was that was a great addition, very very smart on your part. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, what have you found to be, uh, you know, because for someone starting a podcast, especially if it's going to be a podcast like this one where they're talking to other people or like yours where, where you're interviewing some, some fairly prominent folks, what would be the best way to approach someone you don't know or, and who may not know you and convince them, especially in the early going, to, to agree to give of their time? Absolutely. Always start with providing value, with a value proposition. You know, for me, Jeff, again, it was going down to New York City and getting those first yeses face to face, getting down there, shaking Pat's hand, saying, Pat, I loved that speech you just gave. I would love just to take 20 minutes of your time at some point in the future to talk about your journey and to share it on my podcast with my future audience. And, and that's how I did it. I just got those initial yeses by doing it that way. And then once I had those names, the people I hadn't even interviewed yet, but I just said they had said yes, I was then able to go back and use those names as social proof so that when I was reaching out to other people via email that I couldn't specifically meet face to face, I could say X, Y, and Z. I would love if you join me on Entrepreneur on Fire. Pat Flynn, C Cliff Ravenscraft, Michael Stelzner have all agreed to be on the show. I would love if you would too. So by using that, their names as social proof, a lot of the, the people would say, oh, I know those guys. They're great. If they've decided it's worth 20 minutes of their time to chat with John, I, I'm sure it's worth 20 minutes of my time as well. And so that is literally how I built that list from zero to three to 40 in the course of just a couple months. Yeah, I would imagine that that social proof was critical, especially uh, in the early going when you hadn't actually launched the podcast yet. I had no live podcast, Jeff. I had nothing, which is, again, going back to my earlier point, the sooner you can launch, the better, because you want to be able to point people towards something. So it was always difficult for me to be talking about something that was going to be launched. So if I had just launched a month earlier, everything would have started happening faster. So just launch, have that minimally viable product out there that Eric Reese talks about all the time in the Lean Startup, and start improving. Don't worry that it's not perfect. That's fine. Just get it out there. Well, uh, uh, at the time that this is uh, going live, this episode, you will have been podcasting for less than a year, about 11 months. Yes. Um, at what point did you realize in the process that you had uh, in this podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, a monetizable product? And I'm curious to know who, who approached whom in that exchange, if you're willing to share that. I'm willing to share everything, Jeff. I am complete transparency. I really do subscribe to that Pat Flynn model of 100% transparency of my business. So ask me any direct questions. I'm happy to share all 100%. It was probably really January of 2013 after I spoke um, at New Media Expo. That really gave me a boost in numbers as well because a lot of the listeners there, a lot of the attendees there became listeners and started telling their friends and blog posts started being written about me oh, and Entrepreneur okay. on Fire. And so those really took my numbers, which were always pretty solid, to really, really impressive. Like at that point I was over a hundred thousand unique downloads per month. Tim Ferriss and Seth Godin had just come out with brand new books, the four hour chef and the Icarus deception respectively. Mm -hmm. And I approached them both and said, Hey guys, I would love if you shared your journey with my audience. And then we can talk about your book at the end as well. I have an audience of over 100,000 unique downloads in over 100 countries. 
will you spend 20 minutes chatting to my audience? So at that point, Jeff, it made sense for them right. to take the time to do that. And that's what continued to really spur Entrepreneur on Fire. Because once you have Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk on your podcast, who's, who's going to say no? Besides Mark Cuban, who keeps saying no. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, and I'm, I'm counting on John Lee Dumas to just shoot my podcast through the roof. Oh, that'll happen. I'm going to share with Fire Nation, Jeff. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So that was really the point where I felt that I could start to monetize because I had a large captive audience. And that was always my goal, Jeff, was to have that large audience. And I knew that once you have that captive and that engaged of a listener base, things were going to happen. And so I did. I started to get approached by some really big sponsors, Audible, LegalZoom, Squarespace. And then once I started getting approached by these people, again, I turned the tables and used them as social proof to approach some other sponsors, right. like 99designs, like GoToMeeting and say, hey, Audible, LegalZoom, they're sponsoring me. I would I think that your company is a great fit as well. You should consider sponsoring my podcast as well. Because again, it's a seven day a week podcast. I had plenty of sponsorship slots to give up because I you know, had 30 podcasts a month. I was going to allow two sponsorships per episode. So I had up to 60 sponsorship slots per month, which was really huge yeah. for me, a huge inventory. So I was able for Q2 to sign six sponsors full time, Audible, Squarespace, Ting, 99designs, GoToMeeting, um, and go, and I think I said LegalZoom as well, mm. and go forward for all of Q2, so April, May, and June, with a almost 100% um, sponsorship slots. I had, a, I think, a 92% fill rate for all three of those months. Wow. And it's real money, Jeff, because they pay by the download, and so it was coming out to me with the downloads that I was getting to you, you know, between $250 when I started, but then by up, but at this point now when we're speaking, it's actually $350 per episode per sponsor. So I was getting between $500 to $600 per episode. Mm -hmm. And again, I have 30 episodes per month. So if you do the quick math, <laughs> you know, that's between fifteen dollars to $20,000 a month in sponsorship revenue alone. And that, you know, that started six months after I launched, that was where I was sitting. Amazing. And so that started um, my major income stream at that point. And since then, I have definitely opened up other income streams, which we can talk about later. At what point you know, did I know that I could start monetizing? Yeah. That was the point, Jeff. Well, I know a lot of the entrepreneurs that you interview on your show mention fear a lot of times as that thing that was holding them back from starting. So I'd love to ask you why you think so many of us struggle with fear or self-doubt and maybe what are some suggestions you'd give us to overcome those fears? I think there's a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons. I think one is that we're born with it. It's innate, literally, just like we're afraid of height. We're afraid of failure. You know, we're afraid of public speaking because we're afraid of rejection. It's all innate. And so every single person has it. And you mentioned that Seth Godin is one of your favorite authors. And mm -hmm. so I'll quote him here in a way, or at least I'll paraphrase him by saying that everybody has that imposter syndrome. Everybody. Seth Godin has the imposter syndrome. Every time when he presses, presses the publish button, he feels like he's a fraud. So to the listeners out there, when you feel like a fraud or you feel like an imposter, guess what? You're not alone. <laughs> 100% of the people in this world feel that way as well. President Obama feels that way. Every single time he gets up to address the nation, I promise you. So you just need to realize and accept that. You're not trying to, don't try to overcome it because you can't. We're humans. We're born with it. Just accept it. Know that everybody else is dealing with it and get over it. So that is the major thing I would say is that accept the fear. I was at a, at a fair yesterday. I knew with 100% certainty that I was going to be freaked out on a roller coaster ride that I was about to go on. <laughs> but you know what? I still did it. <laughs> I'm just picturing you right now with the fear on your face. <laughs> That's why my, my throat's a little sore because I was screaming for about two minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> well, one of my favorite Seth Godin quotes and uh, uh, something that inspired me to, to get off my rear and, and do this was his, I think it was from uh, Lynchpins. Uh, where he says, stop waiting to be picked. Pick yourself. Pick yourself. <laughs> and another thing that I love, too, that I think either he said or somebody very similar to him has said is, listen, give yourself permission 
And that's one thing that, you know, I like to do is, you know, when I lead my mastermind here, Fire Nation Elite, and someone's like, John, I want to do this, but I don't know if I should. I respond back and I say, Jeff, I give you permission to do that. <laughs> and a lot of times that clicks in their head and they're like, you know, wow, like I don't need, like I can give myself permission or, you know, I, you know, let's just do this. Let's go. And it works wonders. Well, you've mentioned several already, but uh, what would you say, uh, John, is uh, the greatest leadership lesson you've learned along this process? I think there's a lot. Um, one of my favorite quotes, and we've kind of talked a, a few little bit about quotes. So this is a direct quote, and it's from somebody who I respect a lot, Albert Einstein, who said, try not to become a man of success, but rather a man of value. And to me, that's a great leadership quote. And I learned that those um, traits in the military as well. When I was a captain leading a platoon, or I was a, sorry, when I was a lieutenant leading a platoon, and then later a captain leading a company of men, that you really truly first need to be valuable. You need to be that example of value. And that's what I try to do at Entrepreneur on Fire is provide value first and foremost. Success will come, but value to me is the most important thing that I want to provide. And then success will follow. I don't feel like it's a good strategy to try to go out there to be successful and then thinking, thinking about providing value second or third down the list. To me, that's not something that's a sustainable business model. So provide true value as a leader and good things will happen. That reminds me of uh, a future guest that's going to be here on the uh, Read to Lead podcast, uh, Jay Bear of Convince and Convert. He's just come utility, out with Utility, yeah. Yes, yes, utility. And I'm enjoying reading that book right now. And he talks about that kind of that same concept, the whole helping versus hyping. And so many businesses get on social media and it's it's this it's another megaphone instead of approaching it from a standpoint of being able to help people first. Yeah, one of his quotes in that book, which I loved, was there's only two letters difference between selling and helping, but it's a world of difference in reality. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Well, speaking of books, uh, you know, one of the questions I like to ask every guest on this show is, what are the books that you're reading or have read maybe in the last couple of years uh, or recently that have had the greatest impact on you and why? I'll give you my two most recent books because, again, at Entrepreneur on Fire, I interview seven to eight incredible entrepreneurs every single week. And every single one of them, I ask, what is the number one book they would recommend to Fire Nation? So I am always getting inundated <laughs> with amazing book um, with amazing book recommendations. And so I'm always reading top-notch books in my mind because they've been recommended by incredible people. And the last two that I've read is one is called Pour Your Heart Into It, which is the Howard Schultz um, he, who founded, or didn't actually, it's very interesting, he didn't actually found Starbucks, but he is the CEO of Starbucks. And hearing his story about how he came to lead Starbucks and it started off as a completely different coffee chain with him, and very, very fascinating. Mm -hmm. And that's a powerful story to read. But another one that I really recommend, and I'm recommending to everybody that I can right now, because I'm pretty obsessed with it, is called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And that book is all about the long game. It's all about how the little things you do every single day can add up to great things in the end. And I think that's uh, Entrepreneur on Fire is a great example. You know, I was not a good host when I launched back in September <laughs> of 2012. And I was not good two months later. And I was a little okay four months later. And every single time I sit down to speak and to, to interview somebody, I get a little bit better. And that's what this book's all about. You know, to be, you must do. And that's all you can, that's, you know, that's the only way. You're never going to become a good broadcast host. You're never going to become a good author if you don't just do. And one book I've heard you mention on your show and in other interviews uh, that I know you highly recommend is The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. You know, the compound effect I found out while reading The Slight Edge. Oh, okay. Um, that, well, I found out that The Slight Edge inspired the compound effect to be written. He okay. was, Darren Hardy was one of Jeff Olson's first students. 
And so they're very similar books, but I had never heard of the slight edge before until one of my guests recommended it. And then I was reading it and I was like, this guy was talking about how Darren Hardy, the founder of success magazine was one of his first students. And then he went on to read, you know, to write the compound effect because there was a, a little addendum in the book about, you know, things that have happened since. So he was talking about it after the compound effect had already been published. So those are two very similar, very mind shifting books. I recommend highly. Well, John, you, you've uh, touched on this, but uh, let folks know again where we can find you online. How can they connect with you? And maybe if there's any projects coming up you'd like others to know about, now would be a great time to share those as well. Wow. Well, honestly, Jeff, it's just been great chatting with you. I mean, you're a great host. You have a great platform. So thank you for inviting me on. I've, I've really been honored to speak to your listeners here today. And eofire.com is really the best place to reach me. That's my headquarters. That's for all my podcasts. Um, I have a director of content creation here, Kate Erickson, who writes a daily blog at that same website. So every single day, you'll see a show notes page with our podcast. You'll see an amazing blog article for entrepreneurs. Um, it's a really exciting place for with a lot of with a ton of resources. And the thing that we're most passionate about right now, Jeff, is the recent creation and now the growth of firenationelite.com. That's just where all of our focus is lying besides the podcast. So, you know, I think that if people are interested in a mastermind, you know, they should definitely check yours out. They should find one of their own um, or they should check out Fire Nation Elite because all of all what it boils down to is you need to be a part of a group of like-minded entrepreneurs. And that's what we're creating. And I'm so glad to hear that something that you're creating because I think that the thought leaders in these spaces right now need to really be spending more time fostering these kind of communities. And I want to make sure everybody, too, uh, knows about and checks out, because I highly recommend the book, Podcast Launch, available Thank you. Uh, via ebook at Amazon.com. Just search Podcast Launch, and it's just four ninety nine. Well worth the investment. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, John, and uh, uh, I won't say catch on the flip side because that's how you end your show, <laughs> but I hope to see you and meet you face-to-face and shake your hand. I look forward to it, too, Jeff. Thanks again. Well, after hearing from John today and the benefits of podcasting, it's probably hard to argue against podcasting for your business. If you enjoyed today's episode, would like to comment or find out about more of the resources and links that we talked about in today's episode, just check out the show notes, readtoleadpodcast.com slash 003. That's read to leadpodcast.com slash 003. I would love it if you could rate the show in iTunes. Let me know a star rating. If it, is it five stars? How about a one or two sentence review as well? If you have time to do that, that would be great. You'll help uh, new folks discover this content when you do that. And if you give it a five star review, I'll mention your name in a future episode as well. To do that, just go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash iTunes. That's readtoleadpodcast.com slash iTunes. Well, we talked a little bit today about building a podcasting platform. In next week's episode, we'll talk with author and speaker and blogger Jeff Goins, who in very short order built a pretty powerful blogging platform to the point that he had publishers knocking on his door in just eight months. That and his new book, The In-Between, on the next episode of the Read to Lead podcast. Thanks so much for listening to the Read to Lead podcast. As a subscriber, we challenge you to be more than just a passive listener. Become a vital member of the community. Visit us on the web at readtoleadpodcast.com and chat with other members at facebook.com slash readtoleadnation. Until next time, remember, leaders read and readers lead.